Hello, welcome back to another Impact Wrestling Review at the Impact Lounge. I'm your host tonight, Adam, and I'm joined by Ro the Great. Hello, Ro. Hello, Adam. How's it going, man? Yeah, fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, it's uh, another snowbound uh, Glasgow evening over here in the UK. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm not going to let that affect the fact that I've watched Impact this week. And obviously, <laughs> uh, we're coming to you uh, uh, live tonight, uh, talking about all the things going on on Impact this week. But before we do, as always, going to have a bit of a shout out to all of our friends in the podcast world. And tonight we got uh, a couple of uh, new people to talk about. So we got the uh, the Wrestling Personified podcast, who are uh, fans of our show. And uh, if you ever get a chance to listen to their show, once again, search them out. Uh, they're good guys, uh, really worth a, a listen. Also, um, we usually talk about, you know, a couple of other guys, you know, we're listening, those kind of things. But we don't really talk about, you know, our presence on, on social media and those kind. So um, really do check out the Impact Wrestling Fan Zone. You know, both uh, Ro and I are on there. We comment quite often. So's BQ, uh, who's absent this week. And it looks like that absence might go on for a few more weeks. So you're stuck with Ro and I, although uh, judging by the comments, I'm sure you're all enjoying that anyway. So um, anything you want to add at this point, Ro, before we dive into the show? Oh, let's just get into it, man. Let's get into it. All right. Before we start, what did you think of tonight's show overall before we look at the, the individual segments? Um, I just think it was um, kind of, uh, I don't want to say a step back, but I think compared to the last two shows, this one was kind of just in between the middle. And that's not nothing bad because I don't anticipate every show to be a knock in the park. Um, I still like to see the continuity and I feel like I've seen that, but you know, just a regular show. Yeah, I, I felt the same, you know, that uh, bearing in mind this was the second week of tapings or the second night of tapings as it was. Um, I just felt that the show passed over, you know, without really much happening. And I know progression did happen, but it was a bit of a, you know, you know, you get the thumbs up, thumbs down. If you want to quote OV, this was kind of thumbs in the middle, you know, not not really great, not really bad. No, nothing really happened. Anyway, let's dive into it. So first things first, we got introduced to the new commentary team. What do you think of these guys? You know, for me, when it comes to the commentary, man, to, to be honest, it, I really don't pay too much attention to it because the one thing with Impact, I'm always focused on the wrestling. So it wasn't that bad or anything. But with that said, um, it sounded like, you know, throughout the show, they were talking more amongst each other, more so than actually what was going on in the ring. I think that was quite apparent. Uh, I, I do think you've hit that nail on the head there. Uh, the one thing I will say, though, is that, you know, JB... Uh, I really liked him and he was a company man through and through really disappointed that he left but on commentary uh, I just didn't like him it, you know him and Josh were just a terrible combination going back to some of the old days in TNA I used to think Taz was the worst commentator I ever heard but these two in combination I think they're up there but um, Sanjay brought something different to it tonight and uh, I don't know if it was his deep voice which is uh, unusually deep uh, on commentary but um i actually quite like what he did and you know bearing in mind this is the first week and it was you know f kind of recorded on the fly uh i did think it did very very well the, the one thing that was interesting about it and uh, this is something that uh, if you get a, a chance to listen to the aries uh, teleconference from last week which i think bq will be uploading uh is he did talk about the commentary being overdubbed uh, on the show and how it sometimes takes away from the atmosphere in the arena uh, because I, I don't know if it's something to do with the sound editing or, or whatever but the, the one thing that I did think about these guys was that it didn't feel like they were there uh, and we all obviously know that they weren't there live at ringside maybe Josh was at the time and etc but they weren't commentating live at, and at times it felt like that I, I don't know if you felt the same you know, I didn't catch it. I think what was more, what was apparent to me for the first time in some time, you know, the the audience actually felt flat to me for the first time. And I mean, I'm sure people who are there, you know, would tell you otherwise, and I'm not here to argue with them. But, you know, this was the first time because I've always thought maybe it was just the way it's come across on TV. But it just seemed like the, the audience wasn't fully engaged. Uh, well, absolutely. And there was a, a couple of times, especially um, some of the audience, I think was maybe EC3 or a couple of people talked to the guys at ringside during their matches. And uh, even even they looked kind of not downbeat, but just tired. 
uh, it was a bit of a strange atmosphere in, in the impact zone. Anyway, uh, let's dive into the to the the running order. So the first matchup this week was Fantasma and Rohit Rahu or Raju versus Matt Sadal and Taji Ishimori. Uh, what do we make of this one? Um, for those of the, you folks who don't know, Rahit Raju is the former Hakeem Zayn and give credit for Sanjay Dutt to actually explain the name change. I guess uh, Rahit Raju decided to he was going to um, embrace his uh, Indian roots. So that's the name why they go with the name change. Sorry to interrupt um, across you here because I, I did notice that on commentary as well. Um, but he seemed more bland now. Um, when he was Hakeem Zayn, he seemed to have more of a personality. But and I know they explained that, and it was good because I was wondering that. And a couple of times I had to think, is that really the same guy? He, he seemed to lose his personality in this change. I, I don't know if it was just me. Well, yeah, and I think the name change you goes along with because they had mentioned this too. Um, we're supposed to begin the Desi Hit Squad coming to Impact soon. I forgot forget the leader's name but it's you know an indian stable and you know the one thing that what i liked with hakeem saying and what one thing i like with impact as a whole is you know when you get um you know people from different countries coming to the company they've always been good at not relying on like stereotypical gimmicks you know usually evil foreigner and you know whatever and whatnot so i thought you know when they did, uh, originally had Akeem Zayn coming in and he i think he it seemed like he was coming across as like this cocky uh upstart which was was fine and i didn't really get the name change but you know okay whatever but anyways as far as the match um it seemed like it took a long time for it to kick into that gear um the you know it's nice to see uh phantasma back in impact um they actually announced that uh we're gonna get well later in the show but uh they announced that we're gonna get an exhibition title match between phantasma and um ishimori and um but it, anyways back to this match um i want to say towards the middle where it really started to pick up was when ishimori he did um he did a moonsault outside off the turnbuckle to the outside and, you know, the ending sequence was Ishimori hit his uh, signature move, that tombstone knee thing with uh, Seidel hitting the shooting star press. I will say, um, and even the announced team mentioned it, uh, Josh Matthews, so to speak, if they wanted to, the, the chemistry that Seidel and Ishimori displayed in this match, I mean, they could make a really good tag team if they decide to go in that direction. And we all know how thin the tag team division is at this moment. I mean, obviously, with Ishimori being X Division champion and Sidell being champion, you're probably not going to entertain it right now. But down the road, that's something that they sh should uh, utilize. I, th I think the, guy, the thing about these two guys, uh, as in uh, Sidell and Ishimori, is that I've talked about it week after week after week. They're smaller guys. Well, maybe not Ishimori, but certainly Sidell. Uh, but every time they hit their high-flying moves, they actually look like they hurt. Uh, and there's guys like Johnny Impact who are obviously bigger. And, and they don't hurt, you know. So, um, you know, I, I would absolutely welcome, um, you know, these two guys working together. And especially as Ishimori doesn't really talk that much, you know. So I, I think he definitely needs a mouthpiece at the moment because he, he is kind of lost. I, I feel that he's, he, you know, he's a champion. He should be, he's kind of himself as a champion in the ring, but he does need a mouthpiece. And, and it's funny, you know, that Congo Kong's got, uh, Jimmy Jacobs, uh, and I really think that Ishimori could could you know really work that that kind of uh, manager role you know someone coming in and helping him out as well. But with regards to the match, I thought it was quite good. I did feel like um, Hakim Zayn or Raju, however you want to say it, uh, he looked the weakest one in the match in that some of his moves weren't fluent. Yeah, I, I don't want to beat the guy up about it, you know. But uh, overall, I thought the match was good. It, it really bothered me that they took a break in the middle of the match, though. I, I don't know if that was the same on the US showing, but it did seem that it broke up the flow of the match by taking an advert break in the middle of it. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't uh, re remember that. But uh, yeah, you know, he did seem his offense. It didn't. He didn't seem to really get the most uh, offense in the match, but. I mean, I'm I'm just happy to see him on uh you know on TV just because a lot of times when you have these shows where somebody earns a contract, 
you know, you, it takes forever to finally get them on TV. So it looks like they, are in, you know, have some sort of investment in him. So that's always good. It's good that they've got an investment in him, but I think they maybe have made a mistake in repackaging him because they could have kept him part of the of the hit squad that's coming in. Uh, but I just think that changing his name, other than uh, Sanjay mentioning it on commentary, I think people are going to lose that connection, especially as he's changed his ring gear. Everything about him has changed. I, I just think that maybe they should have just kept him as Hakeem Zayn. Um, you know, moving forward as part of the hit squad. Anyway, it is what it is. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments. By the way, just w- while we're on that, uh, you know, talking about, uh, you know, the comments and those kind of things, I think uh, out of the impact reviews, that's one of our best viewed shows for quite some time. So thank you for all of those who've tuned in. If it is your first time, make sure you hit uh, the subscribe button. Uh, although the content hasn't been as regular as we like it to be at the moment, that is going to be picking up over the coming weeks. So if you've got comments or you've got questions for Ro and I, leave them in the comments as well. OK, so next we had this kind of fake um, Austin Aries press conference. What do you make of this? You know, it because the article that I had read in Ahmed, I kind of was like, oh, my God. And then after seeing this, it kind of had me at ease. Um, for those of you who don't know, Austin Aries isn't under contract with Impact right now. So, you know, one would surmise like well, why they decide to put the uh, Impact Heavyweight Championship on him. But with this, it seems like what they're going with him is he kind of has a belt collector gimmick, which is interesting where he's going to try to go to all these different promotions and collect titles. So, you know, that that's cool. And then, you know, you got Eli because, you know, the one thing I was wondering was, well, is Eli not getting his rematch? Because, you know, we know sometimes they don't really, you know, follow the traditional rematch clauses. So you got Eli coming out talking about, I'm still champion. You know, this guy's not even signed with the company and, and, you know, he has the belt. And so they, um, that set up the rematch for next week's impact. But I just thought it was interesting, you know, some uh, some news coming out and then for them to have this and it kind of just tied in i thought it was uh you know nicely put I, i'm not sure if i believe this about him not being under contract um because obviously there's always been uh, you know a lot of talk about what's going on at impact and the contracts with the wrestlers you know uh, about having a percentage of their takings of independent shows and those kind of things i really do wonder if you know the management would allow someone to come in who hasn't got a contract. And, and I do think maybe it's part of the storyline. Now, there was a teleconference this week with Austin Aries, and I, I listened into it. I didn't get to ask a question this week, uh, mainly because by the time I got to ask a question, all the good ones are gone. So uh, I thought it was better to be silent. But it was brought up to him. And although we answered it as if he still doesn't have a contract, for for the regular listeners of these kind of teleconferences, it's always quite kind of hard to tell whether it's real or not, because some of them do absolutely play it in, in kayfabe, you know, and they're still the wrestler. Some of them play it as, you know, like KM did in our interview that, uh, he, you know, it's the real person talking. So it was kind of hard to tell whether Austin was talking in character or not when, when he was talking about it. But what interesting did come up was that. He was when he first did it, uh, approach Impact, and I think it was Scott Demore who was having the original talks with. He was trying to come on as a kind of road agent, and uh, that was what he was pitching himself at. And then it was almost like they offered him the title. So that, that was an interesting thing. But it does maybe you know let's see where it goes. But it does if he really wants to do become you know some part of creative on, on Impact, that's got to be a good thing. But he is going to stick around whether he's got a contract or not. Yeah, anyway. I agree. It, it, and I'll just say the last point I'll, I'll add on is I think just the thing that I worry and, you know, hopefully it's not the case. You, you, I try not to get too, you know, too much involved in was this guy signed or, you know, not. But, you know, the one thing I worry is, you know, with Impact trying to change, you know, their uh, reputation and, you know, to be appealing for a lot of these uh, free agents, you know, to uh, get talent and whatnot. I don't want them to go against what they would traditionally do. So, you know, if this guy's, you know, or this gal's talking about coming over, but they don't want to be under contract, but you're devoting TV time to them and, you know, putting titles on them, you know, I don't want them, I don't really want them to cater to, you know, 
try to cater just to make to just to please the other party you know they still got a business to run so that's just one thing that would just worry me but you know like you said we'll see how it plays out okay we're going to move on now to um, my favorite part of the week which is uh, as i've said for quite a few weeks now my favorite thing about the show trevor lee the cult of lee um they're out next taking the mickey uh, or if you're in the uk taking the piss out of uh, lax uh, these guys are brilliant uh, and uh, i don't know if they're going to be involved in the title shot of, of uh, you know the tag teams those kind of things but these guys deserve to be on the show every week as far as i'm concerned what did you make of this i like this um you know normally this is kind of one of the arts we don't see too often in impact i mean here and there were certain individuals but you got a tag team that's uh, formed and you know you just put them in a match with some uh, local talent and they just kind of run right through them and this just kind of just displayed you know cold of lee's arrival to the tag team scene and you know they're coming for the impact tag team title so i liked it do, do you know impact gets a bad rep all the time about they're creative and those kind of things and they do things wrong but the, the one thing for me i think they do very very well is that they do build characters extreme extremely well i mean look at ec3 there's no doubt that uh, wwe wouldn't have wanted him if it weren't for the fact that, that they've created this character and they've built him into something oh well main event star let's face it and with trevor lee this is a guy who was under shane helms stuck with andrew everett going nowhere really and they've turned him round in, into one of the most entertaining things on the show and they've they've found a way to transition him from x division into something else so for me you know kudos absolutely they're, they're doing this right impact their creative team i think has always been quite good in in you know in certain parts but overall you know i, I think they've done a great job with with trevor lee yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, you know, I thought he was, you know, one of the guys that it was time for him to move up. And, you know, this is like I said, this gives an opportunity to give Conley something to do besides just being kind of his lackey. So, you know, tremendous job. Now, you know, the thing I liked about this match, uh, you know, there, there was a bit of offense from was it Tech? I think that was their name, wasn't it? Um, but the thing I liked about it was that Trevor Lee and Caleb, they mimicked LAX all the way through the match, but they even used their finisher as well which I, I thought was a really nice touch. You know, I, I think this feud with LX is going to be really good. I, I don't imagine for a second that Cold of Lee at this point are going to win it. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Hopefully I am wrong because I like them. But um, I really like the, what they're doing, you know, with the mimicking and even mimicking the finisher. I thought that was a really nice touch. No, you know what? It in I don't think they mimic the finisher. I think that's the finisher that they're using because uh, LAX uses a street sweeper. And because that, the, 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 and you know, maybe I'm wrong, but that was one thing. What I like, I said, you know, that's cool. You know, this tag team, you know, the Cold of Lead, you know, starting up as a tag team, they even got a tag team finisher down. Because that's one thing when you're talking about tag teams, the great tag teams, well established tag teams, they always have that finishing maneuver. And this was one thing they pulled out. But LAX might use it, but I know LAX's finisher is that they use the Street Sweeper, which is the power bomb blockbuster combination. But I don't know, I might be wrong. Uh, who is it uses the is, is it uh, maybe over you uses a spike power driver yeah I, well it's not the it's not their finisher i think it's a move that they use though but i i, I get what you're saying but i had taken this as like all right this is their their finisher which is cool because you know if they're going to be tagging they need some kind of established tag team move yeah absolutely well my mistake listeners uh apologies for that but you you're quite right I'm thinking on it it is ov's finisher but anyway so anyway post-match lx showed up on the big screen um I'm actually quite glad that they kept them apart at this point. Uh, I think if they'd have had them rush the ring or do a promo in the ring, I think the payoff would have been too soon on this one. Yeah, they um the promo that they had, and once again, and this is when it was just I was like, okay, they are the you know the crowd maybe they're just fatigued since it was the second night of tapings. But normally when LAX is on the screen, you know that's when everybody's like, you know, and when uh conan was cutting the promo it just seemed to go over so flat yeah I, I think it's um maybe also a symptom of the fact that lax are they getting a bit stale you know but i suppose that's a question for our listeners you know lax they're doing the same things week in week out and let's face it you know 
they're not really evolving that much at the moment. You know that there was a, you know, they, they've done the hill to face turn very very well, but you know what's the next stage for LAX? You know because they they they're now going to be feuding with the Cult of Lee by the looks of it, as opposed to OVE, which is a good thing. It's a, it's a fresh thing, but at the same time, you know, do they have to now step it up and think of something different to do because you know, it's been not. I don't want to say it's stale. It's not stale yet, but it's getting close to being stale. Would you disagree on that one? Yeah, I mean, it seems like they're kind of running out of material a little bit. I think that that double turn that happened at a Bound for Glory kind of uh, threw everyone off guard because I think LAX worked best as kind of being um, neutral. You know, not face, not heel. But then when they be kind of, they kind of became the de facto face. I think that kind of, you know, because you think about their promos, that's not stuff really, you know, a face tag team would cut. But you know, with LAX, since they kind of got that edge, they get away with it. I mean, I think they'll 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 be fine. But uh, yeah, I, I know what you mean as far as with uh, Conan's promos. Serious, like a late period. I've heard that so much. <laughs> Hard like a blue pill, whatever it is he says. Yeah. Anyway, enough enough at LAX. Okay, so moving on. So we got backstage segment between uh, everyone's new favorite uh, knockout, Kira Hogan and Ali, uh, where she receives a Valentine's card. Who could it be? Who could it be? Uh, I really hope it's Robbie E, but I don't think it's going to be somehow. Um, so what do we think of this, and who do we think it is? Um, before I uh, answer that, I was kind of <laughs> surprised that uh, Ali. It seemed I don't know if you caught this. It seemed like she resorted back to the old uh, Ali character. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe that's just who she is. But you think about you know the past couple episodes of Impact, we kind of seen you know this different attitude with Ali. Whereas with this one, she was kind of all you know bubbly like character. And not that it's a big deal, but I just hope it doesn't re- you know resort into her. Uh, her character in the ring being that she can't wrestle but if i had to guess I'd probably say braxton sutter you know <laughs> maybe i know i know that's probably you know a no-brainer but you know i'm just thinking of somebody that's on the roster but uh i think i thought it was cool how she was interacting with kara hogan kind of pumping her up and wishing her luck for her uh, knockouts title match against lvn no absolutely i, I mean 99% of the time is going to be uh, Braxton, as you said. You know, 1% of the time is going to be uh, Richard Justice. But um, let's hope it's that 1%. Uh, yeah, you, you're quite right. She did revert back to the old alley of sorts, which I talked about for, you know, many, many of these podcasts saying that I need some development from her away from this kind of character. But uh, I, I do think that maybe it was just playing on, you know, the out of ring stuff as opposed to what she's like in the ring now. So. So, so hopefully she doesn't take a step backwards. I don't think that she's going to do that, to be honest. But it's interesting. At least they're building a storyline, you know, something different from last week's show, which was pure wrestling. At least there's some backstage stuff this week. So um, after that, we went to Mackenzie Mitchell talking to uh, Moose. And uh, once again, talking about, you know, how he's played college football, NFL, and those kind of things. And he didn't make it to the big time either time. <sighs> Is he going to the well too many times on this one? Do, or do we think we need to see something new from Moose? What do you What do you think about this? Um, I didn't have too much of a problem with it. If anything, I had me scratching my head because I was like, dang, you know, for as long as he's been, he's never really been in no, uh, or at least I couldn't recall. Has he ever gotten a shot at the Impact uh, World Heavyweight Championship? But the thing I like, it seems like they're capitalizing on Moose's momentum. We've seen it ever since him defeating Lashley. And then we see last week he gets the big win. So to be in a match of this caliber, it at least it's telling me as a fan that, you know, they have big plans for Moose. So I had no problem with it. It's just, it's crazy. It was like, wow, this is his first uh, opportunity or number one contendership. So uh, I had no problem with it. Do you think they're going to pull the trigger on this guy eventually? Because he's been in the mid card now for, for quite some time, and obviously, you know, people are listening to this show. They, they already know it was probably the main event result. I mean, but do you think they? How long do you think they're going to keep him in this mid card role? And you know, bearing in mind that he's not going on to the, you know, to challenge for the title at this point, do you think that's any time soon, or do you think they're going to put him in another mid card feud? No, I don't think he's going to be in a mid card. If anything, I think he's already like this. Uh, the main event was pretty much his quote unquote in- introduction into the main event. If you had to ask me when they're going to pull the trigger, I'm just going to go out on a limb. I'd say at Slammiversary. I think if he's going to win the Impact Heavyweight 
championship it's going to be at a pay-per-view or maybe they'll do you know like when they have one of the specials that's when they'll pull the trigger and he's going to take it off of a hill my dream scenario would be he gets it from eli drake you know that's assuming eli drake regains the uh title but he takes it from uh, eli drake that's what i'm going with just thinking through that timeline there i just feel that possibly that's too soon for eli to get it back from austin for for moose to to get it back a anniversary in june but um, I, I think that if anything, Moose is most probably likely going to be more bound for glory. Um, I, I just think that the, the build has been very good because he's been at the say now America's top team. He's been in that storyline for well since last year's anniversary. So I think they've got to build him up as something away from that. And uh, or, already we've forgotten about that storyline. No, no talk about it this week at all. So uh, yeah, let's see where it goes. Anyway, moving on, uh, we've got Kira versus Laurel Van Ness. Okay, so obviously Laurel, the champion, coming into this match. Uh, well, let's hear your thoughts. Uh, I thought Laurel dominated majority of the match with uh, Kerrigan and some minimal offense in. It's okay because this is her second match, you know. Let alone it's a title match. Um, I love the ending sequence where Laurel whipped uh, Kira into the rope and then she was able to na- nail the uh, Van Prettier, which is. Uh, unprettier for people who don't know um but yeah it was fine simple and i think kira is going to be a great addition to the knockout roster i think she's good in the match um the what the one thing that i want to pick people up on and you know this is me turning heel on our listeners here but i posted well i didn't post but i mentioned last week's show that i think laurel van ness is is one of the best wrestlers on the female division and there's something about it I really, really like. And I know we disagreed about it, but it, it seems that all of our listeners agreed with you. And, and I'm on the on the outside on this one. But once again, you know, I just like the way she wrestles. There's something about it. I know people say it doesn't look clean. And, you know, I, I'm no, you know, scholar of, 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 of the art or whatever. But, you know, I do feel, and I've talked about it quite a lot. And I felt this move was sloppy, that move was sloppy. But I don't see anything bad about Laura Van Ness at all. I think that she wrestles in a really kind of hardcore, not hardcore style, but, you know, like brawler style for, for the women's division. And I thought this match was great. Uh, once again, she's she, I think, is a bigger loss to the Impact roster. And this is crazy now. People, please pick me up on this. But I think she's a bigger loss than EC3, Lashley and uh, Jeremy Borash. I, I think she's the one who had the most equity going forward. That could have been a star. Well, yeah, I mean, well, you're talking about the knockouts division because the knockouts division was already thin to begin with. So, you know, we were looking at it. You think about just say around, you know, Bound for Glory. We're looking at our knockouts, you know, after Gil, Kim's retirement. You're looking at Rosemary, Sienna, Ali, um, Laura Vaness, and then Taya. You know, Taya had just arrived. So those were like your, your four to five girls. And with Laura Van Ness being one of the top four because during that time she was the only one who hadn't um, had the opportunity to win the knockouts cha- uh, championship but I mean we can agree to disagree it's just like I think Rosemary is very good in the ring and I know you had mentioned you don't think she's that that good so it's really just the eye of the beholder I mean I don't think Laura Van Ness, Van Ness is a bad wrestler but just standard I mean I don't watch her matches and think oh god that was atrocious but then I don't think like oh man that was like a five star it's just standard you know good good matches no I agree I, I don't think she does things you know in a slick manner but everything she does looks real you know and, and I keep going back to you know for me wrestling should be now, these guys are, oh, I say guys in this instance, gals are in the ring because they got a few to settle. And I don't like wrestling when it looks like it's choreographed. And quite often, X Division matches look like that, you know, that people are just standing in a position to hit a spot, etc. But Laura Van Ness, and the ending, as you just said there, is a perfect example of this. It looked like it was done on the fly, you know, that in a real fight, that's the kind of thing that you do. You would take advantage. You would, you know, throw someone to the ropes and then just hit the Van Prettier, you know, out of nowhere. That sounds like an autumn move there, doesn't it? Out of nowhere. But you know what I mean? <laughs> it, you know, it, it just to me, that, that's why I like it. It just seems more realistic than a lot of the other wrestling on the show. And, and that's maybe why I like it. And, and you know, where, wherever she goes, I mean, obviously rumours that she's going to WWE. I would have thought she'd appeared before now. Hopefully she'll go on to do 
not bigger and better things, but she'll, she'll go on and have a good career wherever she goes. I just um, think the loss, the loss, what makes a loss hurt is because we finally seen some progression with the character and, you know, she's finally getting a role because remember we were seeing her just in the audience, you know, doing God knows what, and, you know, for her to finally get, you know, a push. And then unfortunately it's during the time where she, ask for her release i think that's what stinks but i I know what you mean though but um yeah no she's great and the one thing i will say before we move on you can see a difference between with her and uh, ec3 and not to you know drill ec3 but even though we know she's leaving it still looks like she's given her all you know these past uh couple episodes of impact she still looks fully engaged even though she knows that she's going to be leaving the company after the set of taping so that that's pretty rewarding very true, very true. And one one thing I would say about the EC3 thing, you know, uh, when you've heard some of his comments since then, uh, he's come over as quite a classy guy. He hasn't talked down impact, which is which is always nice to hear. Okay, um, I agree. I agree. So uh, anyway, Kira looked good in the match. Um, you know, I, I think that she doesn't look like a, a real contender right now. She still looks, you know, fairly. Oh, I don't I, I don't know how to describe it. But, you know, as in. She's still building her character and going somewhere. You know, she doesn't look like a, a real contender at this point. But she, she looks good, though. She looks good. And I think the crowd seemed to like it. OK, moving on to Creepy Cram. Um, we got OVE. Wait, and... but, but, sorry, before we get yeah. into that, we forgot to mention that uh, there was a post-match beatdown, which led Ali to uh, come out and save Kira. And and I guess that's going to set up uh, or continue the feud between LVN and Ali. Just want to mention that. <laughs> You're quite right. You're quite right. So I, uh, I did skip over that. Um, yeah, but yeah, as you're right, she did run out and uh, yeah, um, setting up next week's show, I'm guessing. So uh, back on to OVE in the parking lot with a camera. Uh, and this was revisited twice. So why don't we talk about the whole thing here as opposed to just saying, you know, it happened and it came back to it. What did you think of the Lashley attack? Um, It came off as so random. But then when I thought back, where when they had L, um, the LAX and OVE, I Bigger guess fish. calling it. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's where I was going with it. And that's when it kind of made sense. But it just still just doesn't make any sense. But, hey, you know, it gives them something to do as a group. Because remember I said the one thing that I was worried about is moving forward where they put more of an emphasis on showcasing Guy Callahan and will OVE kind of just be in the background. But this gives the whole group something to do. So, it, that that should be interesting. Now, I would agree with you if uh, America's top team was still together and Lashley was on that top team. You know, it would give all three of them something to do. But as it turns out, what I can see is uh, the Chris brothers being fodder before Lashley uh, feeds off Sammy Callahan. Although we all know that Lashley's going at some point, so I didn't even know if we're going to get that payoff. But it does seem pretty random to me. You know, as you said, you know. Why have they targeted Lashley? I, I, no idea. Let's see where it plays out. But what, what did you think more of the storyline as opposed to where it's going? Did, did you like the, the kind of camera work? What, what do you think of this? Yeah, no, I don't have a problem with it because it's something new. And I'm all about giving guys something to do. I mean, we got Lashley, you know, who we know will be departing. So what better way to go out than to work programs with people who are not only going to be there, but, you know, we'll just say right now, a future of the company. So it gives them something to do. And for them working with Lashley should give them a rub. With that, with that said, I mean, if Lashley runs through all three of them, like, you know, newspaper, <laughs> I don't know where I got that from, then, I mean, it's going to, it's not going to mean much, but no, nah, I have no problem with it. No, just going back to the filming style of it, I, I quite like it because at least it gives OV an identity. And, you know, I, I'm always keen, you know, out of, you know, the arena segments, those kind of things. But this feels like every time you see one of these scratchy video cameras, you know, that's OV straight away. So I, I kind of like what they're doing with it. The fact that they, they're targeting Lashley, not so keen. But anyway, let's see where it goes. OK, so Mackenzie's with EC3. Uh, I quite enjoyed this promo. What do you make of it? Yeah, I just thought it was just, it seemed like it was a coincidence. And I mean, I know, you know, during this time he had already put in his notice that he was leaving, but, you know, he had tied in, you know, people are wondering, am I going to stay or I'm going to go? And then he vowed he wasn't leaving until he became the 
three-time world champion. So it, it kind of was funny because it's like, well, okay, obviously, since we already, most of us know what's going to happen, you know, that three-time champion is probably out of the question. But it, it was fine. It just, man, you know, and, you know, once again, I'm not just going to blame him. I'll say maybe some of the booking, you know, with all the changes. You know, you think about two years ago, this guy was the company and like now, you know, he just he seems like just such just just another guy. It's it's crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, nothing really more to add on that one. By the way, listeners, if you've got anything, any comments on these kind of things, you know, we talked about OV style there. We've talked about Kira Hogan, all these kind of things in LV. Please let us know in the comments. You know, this show. We, you know, we talk about the show every week, the the actual impact show, but this podcast show, we need your comments to feed off, you know, and we're more than happy to answer your questions. So please do leave yours. OK, so um, we went into a bit of a, a, not a segment heavy section here, but now we're on to Jimmy Jacobs and Congo Kong uh, progressing this storyline. So um, not really much for me to say on this one, but did you have anything to, to add or should we just move on? And you just move on. I mean, it's kind of the same thing. It, it looks like it's just leading up to an abyss Congo Kong program. I, I just wonder, you know, that they've got someone like Congo Kong there. And you just think, could they not be doing something better with him? Because does anyone really want to see an abyss match at this point? And, you know, don't get me wrong. It just feels like they're breaking him out too often. And, you know, people like the Joseph Park character. And I just... I feel like they're going to the well too many times with Abyss and it's just kind of, you know, diluting it each time that you do it. So uh, I, I don't get this program at all, at all because no one's going to buy a pay-per-view to see Congo Kong versus Abyss. No one's going to, no, no one wants to see that match really. And yeah, I just think, I, go on. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Finish, finish what you're saying. I was saying. just going to say, you know, there's so many more interesting things that they can do with Chandler Park, with Joseph Park and Congo Kong that doesn't involve them. You know, I think what they're doing, and we kind of see this, especially when you got like this big monster type character, you know, um, and I use this with, you know, another company where when they're trying to get a big guy over, they usually have him face the Kane or the Big Show. And, you know, we all know Kane and Big Show, they're way past their primes. But I guess given, you know, this star, the big you know, win over these two guys, it kind of catapults them to that next level, so to speak. So I think this, they're using this as a tool where if he, you know, if Congo Kong runs through Abyss, then you could integrate him in the main, main event scene. Cause I, I think you could plug in Congo Kong well. I mean, it's missing that element. We don't have, when's the last time that Impacts had that monster like guy in the main event scene since Abyss, so to speak. Yeah, but but I agree with everything you said there. But I mean, if you're going to build the monster as someone, then you've got to have him run through the lower card first before getting to, you know, a credible person to try and stop him in abyss. But they just seem that this this Jimmy Jacobs story. Okay, they've gone through Chandler Park, but I mean that, you know, he, that's the second match when they when they beat him down. So you know, why couldn't they have gone through? You know, I, I don't want to say Braxton Sutter, you know, but but people of that ilk who have got no build at the moment, you know, squash them before moving on to, oh, this is going to stand up for them. You can't beat up my cousin Chandler, you know, that kind of thing. But it just seems that they're trying to draw out of this before trying to build them that way, which doesn't seem to work in the same way that you're suggesting. So I, to me, I've got no, no interest in this feud at all. I like the parks. I like what they're doing, and I like Chandler Park, and I think that storyline had had merit. But bringing in Congo Kong to me makes no sense. All right, okay. So Matt Sedell talks to Ishimori, um, says uh, he will face Phantasma next week. Can I just say Phantasma? I think is brilliant, and uh, out of the guys that they brought in at Slammiversary, I think that he's one of the best ones. I, I think he's really, really good in the ring. Yeah, I agree. I hope that he's someone that they're able to keep on or, you know, can work regularly. And he's someone too. him and Ishimori. I had uh, and I remember mentioning this uh, last year. I said, you know, for these partnerships to work, they're going to have to, you know, take a chance and put a title on one of these guys. And I said, you know, Ishimori being one and Phantasma being the other. So, you know, maybe down the road, you know, sticks around. That's somebody that they could utilize. But I'm looking forward to this match. Yeah, absolutely. 
Okay, so uh, next we had Hanaya the Huntress versus Ambanova. Now, I've got a big problem with this match for, for two reasons. Um, first of all, I think that they should have just got rid of this match. It, it serves no purpose at this point. I think they should have just forgotten about the attack on Rosemary and they should have just moved away from this completely and just taken it off TV and filled it with some, some footage from some, somewhere else, somewhere. Um, and secondly, Ambanova, I... Uh, you know, I've seen her wrestle now. Has she won a match? Uh, she's great, by the way. She's lovely. You know, I've met her. She, she, she's she's wonderful. But she looks so small compared to all the other wrestlers. I mean, can you ever really see a point where she's going to win a match? So, you know, they, they really fed her in this match to Hanaya. And bearing in mind what we know happens to Hanaya getting fired from the company, why even put this on TV? Well, I mean, in Amber Nova's case, I think in, you know, we've seen her in various matches. She's more of an enhancement talent that Impact, you know, regularly uses when they're trying to build knockouts. She's, know, the, North, knockouts. she's the North Furnham of, uh, <laughs> of uh, the, the knockout <laughs> roster. <laughs> but I think if you were to thrown the match out or it's just scrapped it since we know Hanaya is no longer with the company then you kind of leave Rosemary without something to do and I think the whole important thing with all this was this little side feud gave Rosemary something to do until they integrate her back into the knockouts title scene so I think if you were just throwing it out then what, what do you do with Rosemary you know so it, it's it's a tough thing you know and unfortunately that's one of the things Impact's going to face and hopefully their fortunes are better in the foreseeable future where when they're doing these tapings, hopefully they don't have any issues with the talent where it's able to reflect on TV by the time, you know, we're able to see it because we see now, you know, when changes happen right after these block set of tapings have happened, we're watching people that are no longer with the company and whatnot. And it, it's unfortunate. Now, I agree with the whole Rosemary thing, giving us something to do, but bearing in mind, we know how it plays out and Rosemary's not going to get a payoff against this girl. Um, why not just have Rosemary in character sidelined by the attack by Hanaya? You know, and if Hanaya disappears, that's fine. But at least Rosemary, when she comes back, it'll be a surprise. You know, uh, and I know yeah, she's she's yeah, come that, back during the be. she's come back during the tapings. Um, but that's because there, there was always the end game of facing Hanaya. And it just hasn't happened. So uh, we'll, we'll see. But uh, I, I just feel that they could have done something better than that actually showcases this match when we all know that it's pretty irrelevant. Having said that, Hanaya was, without wanting to sound very um, Harvey Weinstein here, but she looked lovely. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that. man. I, I You know what? <laughs> I always tell BQ this. Give Impact credit, man. They're able to pick knockouts that aren't only attractive, but, you know, they're able to work in the ring, too. That's the best of both worlds. Yeah, I, I think we should move on swiftly from that one. <laughs> uh, anyway, on to the main event. Uh, Moose versus EC3 versus Johnny Impact versus Alberto El Patron. Um, before we start on this one, I, I've said this a few times now. I think Alberto gets a really, really hard time. Uh, from fans, you know, both ex WWE fan or oh, WWE fans, I should say, and Impact fans, that uh, they feel that you know he's only you know chasing the dollar. He's got nothing really to offer the company. I think he's been absolutely stellar since he's been at Impact, and I know he's had off-screen issues with Page and those kind of things, but I think on screen he's been fantastic. And in this match again, I thought he was really, really good. Yeah, I noticed that with him um, lately in his, some of his matches. It seems, you know, he's at that point, and I'm sure, you know, he'll be back in the title picture. He'll probably even regain the title at some point. But it seems now that, you know, he's willing to make the people he's work, working with look well. And I think, you know, and I, I can only speak for myself, but, you know, the thing with me when somebody who's come comes over and they're well-established, it's not so much I have a problem with them coming over, but what can you contribute to the roster? You know, we got a lot of people on the roster. We want to see um, be elevated to that next level. So with somebody with your type, with your cachet, you know, I'm looking to you to be able to do that. And I'm able and I'm starting to see that with him now. You know, why, you know, whether he's working with in this match with Moose, with EC3, with uh, Johnny Impact. And I can appreciate that. So I could say I appreciate Alberto now 
versus when I, you know, when he first arrived, where I was just like, oh, here we go again. Do you know the one thing that that he jumps out to me? Uh, and if I describe him with one word, he's nasty, and you, you don't see that in any of the wrestlers. You know, Eli Drake is he nasty? No, he's he's a dirty cheat. You know, Impact. You know, he's a nice guy. You know, he does all these swivelly moves. EC3, he's the dirty cheat. But but Alberto comes over as someone who's vicious and nasty. You know, and that is actually angry at the other wrestlers. Uh, and I think he, he's portrayed it very, very well. Uh, and I would actually, I'm one of the few, I think, who would welcome another title reign by him at some point. You know, don't get me wrong. I want to see the title back on Eli. I'm, I'm not bothered about the other guys in the scene. But, but Alberto, I, I think he could have a legitimate run and, and help put someone over when they finally take the title. I'd like, I'd eventually like to see Alberto face Eli and Eli beating him clean for the title. Yeah, that'd be fair. Well, with, with that said, with this match, I found this match highly entertaining, probably my favorite. And this, I seen the crowd, they seemed into it. And that's probably in part because the match alley actually went to the crowd and it kind of had a little bit of um, hardcore, some hardcore moments in it. And uh, unfortunately, we got an injury with Moose. Hopefully, it's nothing too severe, I don't think. But uh, hopefully, you know, he's not out for long because I'd hate to see a guy who's, you know, really riding some high momentum, you know, be shelved with an injury and then have to come back and have to work his way up. But, uh, yeah, I I, I found this match uh, highly entertaining. And uh, congratulations to Johnny Impact, I believe, won won this. He's going to be the number one contender. I think your comments there pretty much summed up the match. Uh, I think Johnny Impact won. (laughs) <laughs> in that it was a good match but uh, you know the, the kind of outcome was uh not irrelevant but it was just like okay uh it happened yeah it, 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 it was him i think it was you know what what threw me off sorry to cut you off i think what threw me off is because i think he won with a roll-up and i was trying to think i was like what was the ending sequence and i think that was what it was he had rolled up by ec3 can i just say if creative ever listened to this podcast Booking 101, never let a face win with a roll-up. That's a, <laughs> that, that's a heel win. A face should win with a clean win. And and that, to me, is, is, is crazy doing it. But anyway, Johnny Impact won. Well done to him. Uh, he goes on to the main event. Um, next, what is it? Um, is it the He's in a face, though. Or? No, I, I, it's just he's getting a future title shot. The winner, he'll face the winner of uh, Eli and Austin Aries. Well, um, I, I don't know how it's going to go. Uh, we can all assume, but uh, you know, if I was going to pitch the two of them, we've already seen Eli versus uh, Johnny Impact. I would actually quite like to see Johnny Impact versus Austin Aries. I think those two would meld very, very well, uh, and and hopefully, you know, I keep going on about uh, Johnny Impact's lightweight move set. But hopefully it won't show so much against Aries. Hopefully, you know, you have something to work with there. Anyway, um, that's the end of the show. Uh, Before we we finish today, we'll we'll get some closing thoughts and some other news articles that that came out. And the one I want to bring up, if you don't mind, Ro, if you give me a few moments, is that uh, we've I've previously talked about Eli Drake being booked like Magnus. Uh, There was comments this week that um, Billy Corgan said that Magnus uh, was always talked down and buried in creative meetings. What did you read this story? Yeah, I, re- I read pieces of it. Um, I didn't get too much into detail, but um, it doesn't surprise me too much. I- I- I'll let you finish to, uh, what you were saying, and then I'll just add some uh, some well, points. I was going to ask, what did you think of Magnus? I mean, do you think that he was? Well, we don't know what his attitude was like backstage, but as a character on screen and as a wrestler. Do you think that uh, he should have been given a, a, a better title reign and a better shot than he got? Um, as far as Magnus, I followed him more when he was doing the whole British invasion with uh, Doug Williams. And I, I think Rob Terry was a part of it, too. So I liked him in that group. Um, unfortunately, I want to say during his title reign, was that the I don't know if that was the destination ah, destination America years. Um, during that time, I didn't really, uh, since I didn't have the station at that time, I didn't really get to catch it. But his title reign, it just, it seemed like, because, you know, the, the biggest thing with him was he was this young, promising talent. And, you know, we see sometimes, you know, that doesn't necessarily make the best champions. And 
sometimes it's the booking, but I don't know his his uh, title reign. It was just it was just so just eh. You know, it it I mean it wasn't memorable, and I mean you could say that for a lot of people, but from what I've heard, you know, it seems like he thinks more of himself than what he really is, and I mean once again that's something that we hear with a lot of wrestlers, but. I mean, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I really, you know, I see he's doing uh, good things. I think he's champion now in NWA, so you know that's good for him. But I mean, it's just whatever. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think his uh, title reign was very, very poor. But I don't think that that was to do with him. I, I obviously, you know, hearing the stories this week, I think it was great. Here. But um, I actually think that he, he had so much upside. He wasn't bad on the mic. Um, but I, I just don't think he had a great feud with anyone. And um, the one thing is he had, uh, since Randy Savage, I think he had one of the best elbow drops in the business. Every time he hit that move, it looked it looked majestic. You know, I keep talking about high impact moves, things that look good in the ring. And that was one of them. Uh, and I'm glad that he's getting another shot in NWA. I just wish that impact would have used him better. And uh, you never know, hopefully some way down the line, you know, he'll get another chance and, you know, hopefully he'll bring Mickey along with him. Although that, that you know, that's another dream. Okay, so that, that that was the thing I wanted to bring up. Uh, you, you said you had a something you wanted to discuss as well. Yeah, just uh, before I get into it, I just wanted to uh, you know advertise for next week. We're gonna get the debut of uh, Brian Cage. Um, that should be really uh, exciting. He's a big monster-like guy who's very athletic so you know got to welcome him to the roster and that's a great addition we're also going to get hanaya versus rosemary um ishimori defending the x division championship against phantasma and then we get our world heavyweight championship rematch with uh austin aries defending against eli drake so next week's show uh looking very promising pretty um, stuck i just yeah, all I just wanted to add, um, for those of you who didn't uh, get to catch it, I highly recommend you guys check out the Brace for Impact. It aired originally on Twitch on uh, February 9th. Um, it's still up now. If you go on Twitch on Impact Wrestling Channel and look on the archives, you can find it. Um, I enjoyed it. And the one thing I was just saying is hopefully down the road, Impact's able to, you know, have things like this where we kind of get two shows in one week. Because I know a lot of times, you know, we only have Impact, so we have to wait next week to see Impact. So, you know, this week to see Impact one night and the next night get to see this brace for Impact where we're seeing Impact talent competing and being used quite well, too. It wasn't no situation where they were made to look like jokes. And, you know, and working with various talent that we might end up seeing an impact down the road, like it, it was it was a great thing to see. So to all the impact fans, listeners and even wrestling fans as a whole, um, I highly recommend you guys check out the Brace for Impact. Cool. On that note, uh, unless there's anything else, I, I think that's a, a good place to end the show. But as we said at the beginning, you know, there's um, uh, plenty of time for us to answer questions next week. So if you have got anything, leave us comments. We love the fact that last week's show was one of the, the highest viewed impact reviews in quite some time. So uh, this is the regular team going forward until BQ rejoins us. So. Uh, as far as we're concerned, we, we love the comments. We love the fact we're getting views. And uh, just if you've got any questions for any of us, please let us know. But for the time being, I think that's us for the night. Yeah, take care, everybody.